Hello and welcome back to the Not The Old Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Bynes. To look back on Sunday's enthralling Scottish Premiership opener for Mullerwell and Hibs at Fir Park, 3-2 victory for the away side. It's coming out now, as with them, um, player interview embargoes, they don't go live until today, as you're watching, as I'm recording this, at least on 3rd of August. So hence why you're not seeing this until now. But plenty of good stuff involved and plenty of talking about points from this game, not just about action on the park as well. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so, especially if you are a Hibs fan watching this. We've got an exciting video with the new Hibs Chief Executive, Ben Kenzel, coming out on the channel this week. We got a one-to-one -one interview with him alongside a couple of other different media outlets. We got a chance to speak directly with, with them for around 10 minutes or so uh, at Easter Road as I record this today. Uh, so that'll be with you this week as well. We're recording a few exciting uh, exclusive interviews this week as well. You'll see one of them this week and then you'll see another couple the week after as well. So plenty of content coming on the channel alongside their usual reviews and different wee bits and bobs of video we do. Either side of the games and before games, etc, etc. But enough rambling, talking about Mull 2, Hibs 3, a great clash, perhaps drove on by the fact there were, I think it was around 5,200 fans, I think it was, inside Fur Park. It was about an average attendance for a game at Fur Park between these two sides that was in that area. So this game, with an away crowd there as well, felt like normal. This was the first game I've been at uh, post pandemic and almost starting the pandemic but in terms of society getting back to normal that feels like that felt like a proper game that felt like 2000 away fans or rough made about it was up to um, and then obviously a strong home support didn't feel like there were any restrictions in place apart from the usual you can't get a pie you can't get a coke and stuff and things like that the football. it felt like a normal game that seemed to transcend onto the pitch it was a much more fiery game the Mullow Hibs games last season were fairly entertaining. I don't think I've, there's been very few poor Mull v Hibs games in recent years, um, but this one especially, it just missed that fan factor uh, last season, and it definitely had that. I think Mull had six, five or six bookings on the day. Hibs had a couple as well, and it was just fiery nature because of the atmosphere coming from the stands. So it was really, really good, really encouraging signs, albeit confusing messaging from the the hierarchy of, of Scotland today um, as I record this on the continued permission of fans in England, I think from the 9th of August, Freedom Day here in Scotland. Social gallery, social distancing limits and that are scrapped, but you still need to apply for large events outdoors and indoors, make of that what you will. But yeah, in terms of the game, that obviously was a great element of that in terms of the fan aspect. Football in the park was great. Really good advert for Scottish football live on the telly. And even though it's match day one, I think you'll struggle to get a game as good as that all season. That, of course, will weekend one. I'm sure there will be. Hope there is. But, yeah, it was great. It was a great game of football. Mull were ahead twice. Kevin Van Veen, who was unbelievable, scored, scored the first one. Davis McGavey put Mull ahead again after Kyle McGuinness equalised. Christian Dodge then levelled for Hibs before Martin Boyle's penalty. Once uh, Marlow manager Graham Alexander wasn't happy with Stephen O'Donnell, ball hits his arm, probably can't be any more than two or three yards away from it, hits his hand. It's a penalty in the rules, but perhaps it's Graham Alexander after, after the match, not in the spirit of the game. But definitely a penalty in the modern game, and ball stepped up, finished it, no problem, the heads won. A, a draw would probably have been a fair reflection of the game. Hibs favourites, Hibs expected to take the points, but Mullow definitely showed up really well in this. If they can play like that against bottom six teams this season, they will have no problem in staying in. But that is the big question for Mullow. Can they sustain that against Ross County, against Livingston, against Dundee, against these types of teams that are likely to sort of be in the bottom six this season and, and keep that up, really, because that was a big sticking point last season. They did beat Aberdeen at Pottery. They did beat Hibs at Easter Road. They got a draw with Rangers, who beat just about everybody in their path last year. They ran um, Celtic close on a couple of occasions. And they beat Dundee United at home as well. St Mirren as well. Decent games with them. 
beat St Johnson at home. They are decent when they feel like well, this is also a very new Mullow side, but then again, contrast with that, they did lose against the likes of Ross County, against Hamilton multiple times when they were thermal, against Kilmarnock. So that is the real sticking point for Mullow that they need to improve on. It'll be interesting to see how they do that. I've got St Johnson this weekend coming, which is a bit more of a difficult task. And then they've got Dundee and the Cup, so that'll perhaps be a good gauge of where Mullow at. In terms of Hibs, Hibs just keep motoring now. Really like what and um, what's happening under Jack Ross at him. He's got a great team um, going there. But we are going to start moving into the interviews we have got because that is sort of the big talking point. Jack Ross will happy with the score and the game for his team. The big talking point from this game was Josh Doyle. The Scottish Football Writers Association Young Player of the Year looks likely to have played his last game for him. There's a strong interest from down south I believe Burnley and Watford are the two teams mentioned. Nottingham Forest has been the one constant. The teams who are buying Doig permanently have flirted in and out of the conversation, but Nottingham Forest as a potential loan move for the season in the English Championship has been a constant factor in any deal mentioned. So I think the deal has to happen. That will be a likely destination for them. It will almost be Hibs to Nottingham Forest. Hibs to Premier League club A, B and Nottingham Forest looks likely for him. But Jack Ross providing an update on Doyle's situation, spoke of the game and the 19-year-old left back post-match at first. Yeah, um, I think opening day of the season you take any sort of victory. Um, coming away from home, not easy in this league. And I think on top of that, I thought we played well. Even at half-time and over behind, but I was pleased with what we produced in the main first half. So, um, I like you do the performance, you need more pleased with the result. Bit helter skelter, I think, but good to get it over the line in the end. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, it's not easy to win games in this league regularly. We did it last season because I believe they're a good side, and then players have got resilience and character about them. And the only thing we didn't do well first half was defend their box well enough on two occasions. Other than that, I thought we were really good, created opportunities, looked a good team, and it was about maintaining that trust going into the second half and I think that certainly for the first half hour of the second half we did that then the last 10-15 minutes comes about um, winning the game and about defending properly I think we did that in that time yeah I think I think everybody was here today first of all would have enjoyed the game beautiful day to play beautiful pitch terrific atmosphere um, just like normal again and so good that and you're right I think it, we spoke regularly last season about how much no fans was impacting the game and People said, yeah, it does, but how easy did you see the difference today? Because I thought the game was aggressive and physical and played at high intensity, but nothing untoward, but just a really good game. Um, and, and hopefully that bodes well for what lies ahead, because I think people being back to the stadium, I know that obviously our supporters will be willing to go away happy. Yeah, so he's, um, he's still a Hibs player. It's not um, impossible that he'll be a Hibs player from the end of the window, but certainly how things have developed over recent days would be, would be much more likely that he'll leave. Um, and if he does so, then it'll be a fantastic move for him and, and good value for us as a club. Um, ideally for me as a manager, all these things happen much sooner than, than today or the last couple of days. But you've got to deal with the problem that it creates and find a solution. And um, It's been a challenging few days for him because he's only 19, he's turned 19 and it's um, a new experience for him. So we'll see him again tomorrow, we'll go from there. But as I said, at the moment, it looks much more likely that he'll move on soon. Clubs in for them, is that correct? Yeah, there's two um, definite in at the moment, and um, you know whether or not any more come to the table in the back of that happen, I don't know. But certainly at the moment, he's um, he has good options, and um, you know thoroughly deserved because of what he's achieved as a young player today already. And as, as I mentioned, for us as a club, it's a, if it happens, it's a great reflection on us developing on a short period of time, making them better and, and getting to a level that those types of clubs want to win. You speak, I think when you when you give a young player his debut and you, and you work with him through the course of a season, you grow close and he has done with me and my staff and um, I think you're protective of him as well. And I think that it's just a reminder to him to stay calm within it. And as I said, the last two or three days have been more challenging for a thing because it's very easy to say don't get your head scrambled by things but he's a young man I think even more mature men than that would find it challenging as well so he's um, he's a really 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 good boy Josh you can't speak highly enough of him as a person and he's handled it pretty well today um, but I just think for, for all concerned for us as a club and more more, um, more particularly for Josh as a young man I think we need to, to conclude things one way or another yeah, really exciting move potentially for Doyle I spoke before on this channel I think he's a great young player 
he's an even better person from what I gather. I've only obviously spoke to him in, in press conferences and things like that. He handles himself really well. With great expectations for him. I'd have, I'd love him to stay around for another year, but that doesn't look likely. Hibbs reportedly meant to be bagging four million for him if he does go 45 million. If they get that, then that is a massive fee for Hibbs and the amount they could do with that to both their squad, things off the park, it could be revolutionary. Potentially, perhaps that's a bit strong. Um, though I sound like there's a riot in coming at Easter Road or that. But, um, but nevertheless, um, I think Doyle more than capable of going to the English Premier League. Perhaps a season too soon for him. Perhaps he does need to go to the English Championship and play a bit more. I think he would be great staying at Hibs for another year. He would play every single week. He'd be well loved by the Hibs fans. He'd be allowed to make a mistake or two. He's not really played in front of fans all that often. And I think it, I would like to see if Hibs were to get that sort of money from him, I would like to see him come back on loan even to Hibs for the season. But it doesn't look likely. It does look like he'll leave the club and I've no doubt that he'll go on to have a very successful career south of the border. In terms of Mullen, we spoke to Graham Alexander post-match. I thought his team merited a point against him, feeling the sensational Kevin Van Dien. Yeah, 100%. I think not just being in the lead twice, I think the performance merited uh, more from it. Um, at least a point, at least. Um, but um, you know, things conspired against us in the second half for us to, to lose the game. But the performance was, was excellent. Uh, I thought we caused Hibs a lot of problems. We didn't let them get into uh, a stride, certainly in the first half. I thought our, Energy level dropped a little bit mid mid second half, um, but that's understandable considering some of the players playing their first game for months. Um, you know, in a, in a few of the boys, but um, yeah, I was I was uh, I was happy to see the team play like that against a, a top. No, I thought I thought um, both sets of people, as in players and and supporters, bounced off each other. I thought our performance merited the support we got, but I thought the the crowd really got behind us and they could see what. What a, a team we could potentially be this season in our attacking sense, how we worked off the ball. I, look, I, I know of Kev's quality, you know, I, I managed him before at Scunthorpe and unfortunately lost him to another club um, uh, at an important time, but you know, I know of what he's capable of. Um, I thought he was, he was sensational today, to be fair, I thought he was unplayable. Um, we know of his quality, we, I thought the other players around him would, were as good, um, but Kev did the things that probably other players. Uh, can't do, I mean in general football, uh, not just our team, um, but he's got to maintain that cons consistency in his performances, he's not going to play like that every week, we know that, you know, that level of quality, um, but doing the basics well, working for the team, his effort has got to be consistent and when he does that he's a, he's a top player and, and we know we've got a player who can who can help win us games, but you know, by no means are we going to be a, a one-man team, you know, we're not, we've got some really good players in there, we probably had I think three players you know, playing their first game since last season, in Callum Slattery, Bevis McGarvey, uh, Liam Donnelly for over a year, his first league game. So the, the signs are good that we've got to keep working to keep that quality on the pitch. The Dutch room is amazing for, for Mola. Um, Graham Alexander got his Van Veen's best season out of him while well, the pair worked together at Scunthorpe and it's clear to see on Sunday at least why Alexander brought Van Veen to Fur Park. He said that Van Veen does the things some players just can't do, and that's especially the case in the Scottish bench. Some of the touches he had were unbelievable, and it makes you think that even though we're going to hear from Kevin Van Veen, he says he can do that consistently. And you've got a feeling if he did that even 10, 15 times a season, then he would not be at Mullow. He would not have been at Scunthorpe, Northampton, these types of teams. He'd have been at the at least the English Championship type level because it really did look a cut above the rest technically uh, on Sunday. But he is 30 now, he is coming into the peak years of his career, he has got two years at Mull, so perhaps Mull are going to see the best of that consistent side of him. We did hear from Kevin Van Dien, a really colourful character, you can just get these, this vibe when you speak to certain people post-match in interviews, that they just seem really keen to do well and just seem like good guys. And uh, Van Veen definitely seems like seems like a great character uh, to have in Scottish football. We spoke to him about rejecting tropical offers, perhaps keeping up this form consistently that his manager says might not be possible, putting his players in the back pocket, lots of different things. Have a look. Uh, yeah, obviously that's quite good good to do today. But in the end of the day, I'm very frustrated. We not took the three points like. Um, 
I probably be more happy with a, with a win today and not score. But on the other hand, it's good to score and like present myself like I've done today with man of the match and a goal and uh, take positives from today. And uh, I think we played good football and deserved a lot more than, uh, than zero points today, to be honest. What did you think of your first taste of Scottish football? Uh, it was good. I uh, felt quite comfortable. Uh, I'm only getting fitter and fitter because last year I missed the whole season really with uh, quite heavy injuries and uh, been training very hard uh, pre-season here and really enjoying my time. So I uh, can wait for the next game again and hopefully do it all over again and score maybe more than one. The manager said you were unplayable. Did you sort of feel like that while you were playing out there today? Uh, um, yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I felt like I had the centre backs in the pocket a bit, just playing around with them. And uh, I hope uh, I can do that a lot more, so uh, I cause a lot more trouble for the defenders. And they always need to go like on the back heel, and uh, they don't know where I am, really. Um, yeah, I was quite happy with the performance, but again, uh, right out of the win. Is it possible to get that consistently, or like, try and get that every week? Oh, uh, yeah, it's obviously possible. And as I said, we're training very hard, you know. They're all. All the lads, uh, you know, the, there's a lot of demanding on us. We're training very hard. There's a lot of positive in the, uh, positivity in the group. Everybody wants to work hard. So uh, again, like next week, if we play like this, I've, I'm very positive. We uh, we get the result we deserve today. Actually, was yeah. it the skin? Was it the skin stock fans who christened you the budget bear camp? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, they called me the budget bear camp. Yes, and uh, well. It's quite no, a good. Not, it's good. It's a good comparison. <laughs> it's a good name to have, yeah, obviously. But in your hand, you need to stay with two feet on the ground and show it every single week. You know, you cannot just be a budget bird camp for one week and the other week you don't show up. So that's for me now to uh, maintain my performances and stay injury free, work hard, be fit, and uh, work hard for my teammates every single week. Uh, yes, uh, a lot of opportunities this summer, uh, a lot of opportunities in England, uh, quite far away, tropical as well, but when the gaffer rang me and the connection we were having, and I think Motherwell is a very good club in, in the Scottish League, I was very interested to come over and uh, all the other interests were, I put a little bit to the side and I trained a couple of days to see if, if I liked it and if they liked me and straight away I liked it and uh, got the contract signed and not, not having any regrets since then. You say tropical, what sort, what sort of clubs are we talking about here? Oh, Azerbaijan, Thailand, like those type of teams, uh, like quite far away, you know, uh, didn't interest me at all. I'm still a little bit ambitious. I still want to play for big crowds and do well and represent myself. So today was on television and that's something I would like to do. I want to like people still like watch me. Uh, if I go there far away, then obviously nobody will be seeing me and I'm yeah, you don't know where I'm going to be ending up. So, um, no, this definitely been the right decision and I'm very happy. And that's all I've got time for on this review. We hope you have enjoyed doing it. Like this video and subscribe to the channel. Plenty more to come over the next week in terms of exclusive content reviews, different analysis, bits and bobs, all that. And you can check out all the latest reviews and news, etc. as the transfer window begins to heat up into August on our website and our socials. Right. As I've already mentioned a thousand times, please do subscribe. It does make a massive difference for us. And until next time.